discussion tonight. He's the chairman of the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee. Congressman, good to have you with us tonight. I said in my good opening statement you. on this program tonight that change has come to Washington. We've never seen a group, I don't think, campaign on obstruction the way they did and going after federal spending and then not falling prey to the horse trading that's taken place. I mean, the Tea Party is a viable political force tonight. Can we agree on that or am I wrong? Well, there's no doubt about that, Ed. In fact, what you've got is a group within one branch of the Congress, which of course is one of uh, two branches, the executive and the congressional uh, branch dealing with uh, lawmaking authority. Obviously, we've got the judiciary as well. But this small group uh, has essentially taken the position that unless they get things 100 percent their way, they're going to threaten to tank the economy. Well, they're let me say, ask you this. Are you happy to see the Boehner plan tanking tonight? tonight? Now, it would seem to me and they've told the members to, to stick around there's pop there might be a vote John Boehner's not going to call a vote unless he's got the votes is that correct well that's right it would be way too risky for him to do that okay so his plans tanking as the clock ticks is that good news for the Democrats well, because it's a bad bill for the country, I think it's uh, good news for the country that he's having such a difficult time uh, putting the votes together. Uh, the question is whether he'll now say, you know, let's try and compromise uh, genuinely with the Democrats uh, or whether they're going to cave in to some of their you know, colleagues on, on the far right, uh, try and amend the bill, go back to the Rules Committee and come back to the floor of the House with an even worse uh, bill, even farther away uh, from the kind of compromise that we need uh, to get things moving for the good of the country. So as this plays out, if the Boehner bill can't get it done in the House, Mitch McConnell, as I see it, now comes a big player to save Banner, Boehner's fanny over in the House. I mean, Mitch is going to have to go over there and talk to some of those Republicans and say, look, we got to go along with Harry's deal here. We're going to try to get what we can get so we can keep this country from not defaulting. And then, of course, Boehner is going to have to peel off some Democrats uh, over in the House. I mean, I think that's the only possible way to get a deal right now. McConnell becomes a key player here. Well, that's right, uh, Ed. McConnell really has been a key player from the beginning, but this strengthens his hand uh, even more. Uh, he can say to his Republican colleagues, look, uh, this thing didn't get through the House, or even if it does ultimately get through the House, look how difficult it was. Yeah. Uh, it's time for us to work together uh, with Harry Reid to try and get something good done for the good of the country. And so otherwise, as he recognized early on, there's a very big danger that the American public will look at this and they'll say, this new crew in the House uh, drove the economy into the ground. Do you think there's a chance now to get revenues back in a deal? Well, we've said all along that if you're going to do any kind of grand bargain, if you're going to really take a balanced approach to significant deficit reduction, you have to have that. Uh, and so if the discussion goes again toward a large uh, bargain, uh, that's absolutely essential. Uh, but that, that, you know, as you know, Ed, the sticking point has been this. Uh, Republicans in the House especially have taken the position that you can't cut a single corporate loophole, not one penny, a penny goes to deficit reduction. Yeah. Uh, even as you look today where Exxon is reporting huge profits, uh, they still think that the taxpayer should be yeah. subsidizing Exxon. Look, Exxon can make all the money it's, it, it wants, but it shouldn't have your money, my money, nor your viewers' money, and the taxpayer money. Uh, they don't need that. And, and finally, the 14th, does that become a viable option? More Democrats are coming out saying that. Well, look, I think the president should keep all his legal options on the table. I'm sure uh, the Justice Department is taking a good look at this to see how it applies uh, to the different obligations the U.S. government has incurred. Does it apply to bondholders? Does it apply to Social Security beneficiaries? Um, does it apply at all? And so uh, I hope that they will continue to keep that in play in yeah. the sense that they need to thoroughly look at that as a legal option. Chris Van Hollen, great to have you with us. Thanks so much. Good, good to be with you. Uh, Let's turn now to Keith Ellison.